Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at West Vault. And I hope you guys enjoyed my 500 subscriber special last week. It was a lot of fun to do, took a lot of editing, but the uh, result was worth the wait. Um, I just happened today, we're back to actually coding 101. And I don't usually do a lot of coding, but today I happen to be working on an internal website and I came across a widget example and I wanted to show you guys the power of widgets using the E2 or E framework. Now, not too many times you hear this word widget. Uh, to be honest, when I first started coding, uh, I had no idea what a widget is. Until today, right? It's one of these unknown words like bucket or collection or container or some sort of box or something that you use. And I'm gonna show you a real example of how the framework has actually saved me a lot of time and a lot of functionality on the UI side, the user interface front end, okay? So I'm just gonna jump over here to my example, boom. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a list here to allow me to add um, companies into a database. We're gonna use this for a drop down box later on um, for my contact. Uh, CRM and one of the things is that the complaint was uh, what if we've got lots of companies I mean somebody could add Apple and someone could add uh, Vodafone someone could add uh, another company maybe Apple private limited which would be the same thing how would we be able to filter that I could use a text search or I could actually create the list and this is the list over here so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a company say maybe um, let's say YouTube, okay? And once I've added the company into the system, right? Uh, there you can see it coming over here <clears throat> at the bottom, YouTube. So now here comes a problem. What if somebody else um, added YouTube in the uh, database, but a different version, maybe he spelled it wrongly or something. Okay, now that could possibly happen. That's one, one uh, possibility of happening. Another possibility of happening is that you add a unique filter to it to stop it from happening. So you go into YouTube and then you add the filter and it says the name YouTube is already taken. But I wasted so much time actually uh, going through this filter. What if I could do an autocomplete to tell me if I've already got this um, company in my database. And let's be, um, when you try to do this, now doing this uh, from a UI, from a front end part is actually very difficult. I actually have to run some sort of filter that pops down and uh, over here and shows me a list of the names uh, that are available. At the same time, right, you don't want it appearing on A or one or two characters because that will make your system very slow. Imagine this list was in the five, you know, five to six hundred thousand companies over there. It take a very long time to filter that. So you will need maybe say three characters, then we start looking for this stuff. Okay. And after thinking about it, I said, ah, oh, this is so difficult to do. I wonder whether Yi has got a widget for it. And lo and behold, I found it on the internet. Here is the autocomplete widget. Okay, so it's called CJUI for jQuery UI autocomplete. And going through this, right, it says, okay, I'll just have to add this widget in here, uh, put in the name, the options, the length, and then style it. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do So, okay, I'm over here. And what I've done is I've already gone ahead and tested this stuff because, you know, when you're recording a video, you don't want you guys for me to spend five to 10 minutes debugging stuff. Um, only issue was actually the model names. As you can see in the documentation, right? You want to make sure that it's just a straight array with no number index. And what I'm going to do is it's just going to remove just that filter just now and comment this one in. And we're gonna load it. So let's type, type it. 
oh there you go so they can easily click that and then now why I wanted to talk to you guys and show you why I'm showing you widgets is that if you use a framework step one like ye or ye2 and you know how to go online and search for a relevant extension or widget and widgets are more for uh, display purposes you can actually save lots and lots of time developing software like for example this to add the autocomplete functionality in my code right this would have taken me at least one hour to one and a half hours because of the javascript involved and i was able to go out there get hold of probably you know this looks like five or six lines of code which you can just copied this from uh, the u1 documentation and within 20 to 30 minutes i had a fully functioning autocomplete functionality and the code is very stable because these are very commonly used uh, widget especially if they appear on the e framework website so that's all i have for you today um, that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so